with the global pandemic and the civil unrest and even dodging hurricanes, man, and quite a few things have 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 happened and occurred since our last show. But the biggest one right now, the biggest news is the NBA and its protest of social injustice and the killings of black men and women. Now, D, I'm going to throw it to you because I know that you were uh, quite proud and pleased with the players' efforts. So what 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 is your take? How do you feel about the NBA and the protests? Uh, well, thank you very much, sir. I was pleased with it. I was very happy with it. Um, the way I see it, um, they were trying, first off, just a little history. There were several players that did not want to play. They did not want to come back because they felt like it would take attention away from the ongoing protests, Black Lives Matter, police brutality, all those things like that. So that was before the bubble was even started. They encouraged everyone, not everyone, but some people opted out. Most people played, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they did their tributes. Um, they were good. They lasted we got a lot of news coverage for a little bit, and now those are falling on deaf ears. The momentum for the protests in a lot of places is dying down. Um, and so they were already they were already wanting things, wanting to do something to bring back the attention. That was one of the reasons they came back with the Black Lives Matter on the court with the T-shirts and everything like that. So once they realized that the attention was not being garnered like they wanted, they really only had one other option if they were still going to do something. And that is literally to strike, your, to take your body, which is your soul, their sole form of entertainment, that they are providing and to not allow that to be entertainment for these people. Um, that is their only recourse. Um, and so they chose to use that. And what I like about it is that it was a unanimous thing, not unanimous necessarily. Everybody agrees that they should do it, but everybody came together and everybody did it. That is the only way that they can put additional pressure on the people who can make the change. Um, my issue is that they one, shouldn't make the change because they didn't make the problem, but two, they are not in the position to make the change. All they can do is bring awareness to the situation. So basically all protests do are bring awareness to a situation that people don't like. This was basically them, their protests bringing awareness to a situation that they don't think is right. They now have the ears, hopefully, of the people, their owners, their governors, who can do something about it. And it's now up to them to put their money where their mouth is, basically, and do something about it. So now, Ahmad, I know you were saying that you don't necessarily know how effective that truly was. It might have been a bit of uh, cutting your nose off to spite your face. What do, what, do, what do you mean by that? What, I mean, we talked about this off camera. We've talked about it actually pretty extensively since it's happened. What are your feelings? What, what, how do you feel? How impactful do you think the protests have been? <clears throat> I don't think it's been a, particularly that one, because it wasn't a protest. It was a postponement. It was a, a, a team decided, we're not going to play right before they were scheduled to play. Which, if they had a plan, like, clearly they didn't have a plan. They had to get the union head to come on there and tell them, look, if you don't play, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Now, before they went into the bubble, if they're a united front, they should have already made that decision. Okay, if we decide not to have some sort of organization, if we decide not to play, we decide not to play, and we're willing to deal with these consequences. Clearly, they weren't. Clearly, everybody had not been polled. It was just a group that decided, okay, we'll grandstand and not play today. Then when they start talking those figures, and I don't know, I guess they made some sort of empty promises about what kind of initiatives they were going to do that's going to somehow stop black uh, racist police officers from shooting black men, which I don't see how you solve that problem with that. Um, I just think 
it's one of those things where, okay, I guess it made some people excited and happy that finally they're standing up. But standing up for what, actually? And then what was gained? Nothing. And everybody's getting on LeBron because the, the, the younger players are saying somehow he he talked down to us, but he made a good point. Now, I'm not a LeBron fan at all, but y'all don't even have a plan of action. The thing is, is that, yes, they play for individual teams, but you're all members of the NBA PA. That's what you are. That's your first loyalty. Your loyalty should be to that. Before you're loyal to the Milwaukee Bucks, to the New Jersey Nets, or any of that type, or the Brooklyn Nets, none of that matters. What matters is the NBA PA. You should be a united front. You're a union. Y'all should have made that decision before you went into the bubble of what you were going to do in this circumstance. Now you just look crazy. All you did was make me have to watch damn, uh, 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 what, what, what was even on that now? I don't know. The RNC. That is all uh, you no, had no, was no, the no, RNC. No. Yeah, that was never uh, – I don't watch any kind of political uh, – I disagree with you, Ahmad. What do you disagree about? I disagree. One, to think that the the, uh, the alternative – there is no other alternative. I guess the alternative, in your opinion, would be to strike for the remainder of the restart season. And as you said so callously, that also would not solve all of black people's problems. So what would be the point of that? Number two, they have a livelihood. They have jobs just like everyone else. Number three, as you stated before, their main goal is the players coalition or the PA or whatever. That PA has a representative that is paid, that is educated in order to go through these things, in order to foresee these type of things. It's not LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard's. Uh, oblig or Pat Beverly, for that matter, obligation to foresee that we might get another black person shot and everybody might feel bad and everybody might want to strike. That's not their job to foresee. And the other part, how they just decided not to play a game, that is how it happens. You have a game scheduled. This next thing occurs, and so now your mindset has changed. And so now you talk about it, you have your meetings, you get the information from the representatives, and you decide whether you want to play or not. Was it better that the Astros and the other baseball teams all came out, did the national anthem, did or not the national anthem, did the moment of silence, lined up, put the jerseys down, and then walked off? Would that be better? And one game... To say it did nothing means nothing or is wrong to me when that is literally all that was talked about for those two days. That is all that was talked about for those two days was the fact that they sat down for those two games. That was it. And to say that that did nothing, I disagree with because the conversation is the point, number one. Number two, the plan, the plan is massive. The plan is big. The plan, as you say, is not going to occur with one action. It's not going to occur in one decade, for that matter. So to say that they don't have a plan, so thus you do nothing, I completely disagree with that. You do what you can do, and then you need to have a plan for what you can do. But you, for you not to have a larger plan to solve racism in America, I can't fault you for that because the people who should have the plan for solving racism in America don't have that plan. Which is another good point, okay, is that are these even the right people to be making this stand? Because I see a lot of people on social media, a lot of people on social media, a few people in particular, uh, who came out and said, I wish the NFL players were like the NBA players. But this dude ain't boycotting teaching. He ain't boycotting singing in clubs because that's what he does. He ain't boycotting none of that stuff. Okay, so why are why are these athletes somehow the uh, why are they steamrolling this movement? Why is it even on them to do that? Why do we expect this out of our athletes and celebrities? You don't see Michelle Wee and Jeremy Lin and uh, you Darvish. The Asians don't look to them to solve their issues because we see. Because as Americans mm -hmm. and as consumers, they see these athletes mm -hmm. accomplish everything they can't do. They see people jumping over other people. They see them hitting baseballs miles and miles away. 
So they they can do that. They can do this. They can they can fix okay. they can fix the the my they can fix my psyche of how I think about other people. Okay, so we go down to the root cause of this stuff anyway, which is my point in a way is you got okay. So you have this group of guys in negotiations with the owners about certain initiatives. When it's a, I, I'm of the opinion that these guys don't even know enough to know what the damn issues are and the root causes of the issues. They're talking about police shooting people, but they don't understand why we're powerless. I've but heard no one a... talk about reparations. I've heard no one talk about the wealth gap. I've heard no one talk about redlining. Any of the kind of stuff that's the reason why we're here. The reason why we're here is because we don't have any money. We're a broke group of people. We have no economic power. And the only people with economic power in this country and influence that are of our hue are guys who went to college one or two years. Well, so I mean, that, that, how is it their responsibility? How do you even expect them? <laughs> it goes, that's it goes the so you, should not, you should not expect them to do but it. They but they're are. the ones in the room. They're the ones, and they're not inviting Sean King into the room. They're not inviting no, no, whoever no, no. into the room. I didn't like, say put him in the room. These are, I'm the just White saying, I'm just saying, and just <laughs> whoever, Tamia Mallory, whatever, Tamika Mallory, whatever her name, they're not inviting them into the room. All not I'm saying you. is that those are the people that, see, that's another problem that we're having that we'll talk about later on. But I'm just saying yeah. those are the people that are in the room. So thus, those are the people that are talking to the people, the the owners in this situation, who are the ones that can make the difference. So and that's yes, the problem. it's on them. And what we would like is for them to either, A, bring someone in who is a little more educated on the fact or for them to educate themselves on the fact. But they're not all idiots. Don't think because they dribble the ball, they're all idiots. I'm not saying they're idiots. But I, what I'm saying is that they're over their head on this. They don't even know who to hire to be their damn accountant. That's how they wind up broke. How, how, how do they know who to bring in for these issues? Another big problem, another thing I had a problem with these past couple of months, okay, and I think this is emblematic of why we're in the position we are and how so much of this stuff is just symbolic symbolism that's going to amount to going nowhere. Remember, okay, what black media personality got the first interview with Joe Biden after he uh, uh, um, uh, picked Kamala? Charlemagne? Nope, not even him. You saw it. Hmm. Cardi B. Uh, uh, yeah. Joe Biden uh, sat uh, down uh, and yeah. talked to Cardi B. That's yeah, who she she yeah. Now, first off, I don't even think she's black, but you know I have a problem with that anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't she's see nothing. Totally she's Dominican, whatever. She looked like the Honduran girl that worked at the store, <laughs> whatever. Okay, I don't think she's black. Secondly, she don't even know what questions to ask. So why is she at the forefront asking the black questions? It wasn't Roland Martin. It wasn't any, but wasn't even Don Lemon. It was Cardi B. He went on there placating her. I'm Joey B. So nobody's ever serious with us. <laughs> nobody's serious with us. It's always a damn gang. Nobody's serious with us. Well, I mean, you, I mean, people. There's actually a lot to what you just said there because. Um, one reason being here, of course, here in America, we we do for some reason we 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 value celebrity like no other country does, and 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 oftentimes, be, like you said, because we are in such economic strife as black people, the only people who seem to obtain a significant amount of wealth that can go that can actually change generation generational wealth, as we call it are our entertainers, are our athletes, are our musicians, are our actors and actresses, our models. So because those are the only individuals with generational wealth, of course, those are the also the only individuals that people who also have wealth value or are around. Like you said, we can't get into those rooms with them because simply we just don't have the capital to be in those rooms. So then the responsibility responsibility is forced upon them. Now, my, my issue with the protests, it wasn't even 
it wasn't even so much that. And yes, there is something to the fact that we're asking very young athletes, many of them who did not finish school, many of them who weren't in school very long, and that does not make them idiots by any means. But like you said, it's a complex dish. It's a complex issue. And oftentimes where we all make a mistake is we only move through emotion. Mm -hmm. So they got emotional. They went and protested with no, well, well, it was because it was initially supposed to be a boycott. They were going to boycott with no plan. And they don't have enough leverage to boycott. Because they need that money. Yes, they have to finish the season. If they don't finish the season, their collective bargaining agreement is is then terminated. If the collective bargaining agreement is then terminated, they then are going to be forced into some other things that they don't want. So what plan are you speaking of if you know that they cannot continue to strike longer than the weekend? If you know that there are other parameters on them, what is this plan that everyone seems to think that this group of people should have? What is the plan? It's not even so much it. what is the plan. Is the question is, why is there no plan? Because they did not have a plan. They had, they had a list of grievances that they addressed and that they had, I guess, accepted or placated by the owners thus far, leading with the voting thing, uh, the arenas all used for voting, leading with uh, more money put out there for uh, social issues and things like that on top of the $500 million, which is nothing, that the owners have already pledged in the first place. Now, the plan is not a good enough plan. I fully agree with that. But here's my one thing is that you don't, to be disobedient, civil disobedience, you don't have to have the plan. A plan is needed to have a plan of uh, to have an outcome that is successful that you are ultimately trying to reach. But in order to do the protest or the boycott or the strike or whatever it is that you're going to do, all you have to have is what you want. You don't have to have how you're going to get there. The, the, the people striking at, at, at General Motors, they don't know how they're going to get to that $45 an hour. They know they want that $45 an oh, hour, yes and they're going to strike until no, then. No, no, no. That's not true. Yes, they do. No, no. The they workers don't know. They the union knows. Workers. Yes, the union they knows. Have a the union workers. In the union. And the reps that work that are elected in them. the. And the reps that are elected in the union mm-hmm. that are paid to do that, they who know how to do it, who are professionals. The same way there's a players union who is paid to do that and who's paid to have access to the NBA's books, to know how much money they can spend on this. They are paid to do that. Those are the ones that need to have the plan. Be mad at that heifer for not having the plan. Don't be mad at the players for not having the plan when they are on the bottom rung as an employee of the company. Okay. okay. But I don't care. Hold on, I don't hold believe. On. Hold on, Mar, real quick. Yeah. I don't believe they sought her out at all. That's what I'm saying. They got so emotional. It wasn't until game time that they decided they weren't going to take the floor. They, and they had nothing well, in place. They spoke yeah. with her. They spoke with Obama. They spoke with Chris Paul on a regular basis. They spoke with a, a, a black CEO. I forgot his name. They spoke with people during this. The Milwaukee Bucks people, George Hill, spoke, reached out to Obama. They spoke with these people. LeBron, Chris Paul, they spoke with people. Like, Can I interject? Yes. Yeah. Let them all speak, then let me go, please. Yes, it was emotional because... They were put in a – all right, I'm, I'm going to simplify it to the simplest form. They were put in jail. They were pretty much put in jail. They played every other day. There was no break. They mm-hmm. they're sent away from their families. They're put every they, – they were – they gave a statement before they left. This is what we're going to jail for. This is what we're going to try to accomplish for our, for the people. And the owners are like, okay, we'll, we'll let you try, but you got to play every other day. So yes, it was emotional because it's taxing on them. They practiced. They did the little, the dog and pony show 
with the practice. It was light, blah, blah, blah. Some of them came in late. The stars came in late because they got their last, they last minute goodbyes and tried to set everything up. But once it, once the grind started, they had no time to do anything. It's either play and rest. Play and rest. There wasn't there wasn't a day where you didn't see a basketball game going on. So they were very emotionally tired. So a that was pretty much their break. They needed they had a breaking point. And with the most recent event happening, it wasn't just Jacob uh, Blake getting shot. Yes, that that. That hurt, but it was also the response of before they left, they were in the streets. It could be, it could have been manufactured, whatever, whatever, but they were in the streets. They thought they were really, they had their hand on the pulse or their fingers on the pulse of the streets of the people. And so them seeing that now they're taken away from it, it's happened again, and then the response of they are, yeah, people are protesting like last time, but now you're letting somebody come from out of state and shoot them up. I don't think you would necessarily, I sure no, you wouldn't really necessarily have that in LeBron out there protesting, which he wouldn't be, but even if Jalen Brown was out there protesting, you ain't going to let this let somebody from the outside just come shoot up a place. And so they're very emotional about that because their cause is not, and even, even with a plan, I mean, what, honestly, here's my, here's my honest question. And this is for everybody who looks at this. Hey, what do you think they are? What do you think these people are? What plan are you talking about? Plan for what? All they could do is plan to to uh, acknowledge the problem. They can't come up with a solution. They like us, honestly. All they do is make money and they can vote. They're not political. They could be. They can be. They can contribute, like we can. Some. Exactly. Can. They can contribute more, mm-hmm. like we can, like unlike we can, but none of them run for office. None mm-hmm. of them can take a stand because of the stand that uh, that the, their business owners take because they don't want to lose that money. So what is what is the real plan? Everybody's like they have to have a plan. No, they don't have to have a plan. They really don't have to have a plan. They can make you sit down and think of a plan because you have to you have to face the facts now. Ain't no basketball going on. Ain't no football going on. But there's this uh there's this TV that's showing this TV or there's this cell phone here showing people getting shot. By the people there that protect us. There has to be a plan, and there has a plan to be a plan. Because, a plan for what? Because no, otherwise, no, because otherwise, because otherwise, for what? What I'm getting ready to tell you, you have to have a plan for change to occur. Otherwise, well, all you're saying? doing is talking. Muhammad Ali just talked. Because, but this is my point. The whole reason that they claiming that they're doing well, let me not say claim. The whole re, their whole motivation for doing this is to bring change. You're not going to bring change with not with just simply bringing attention to something. There has to be an actionable gain made, and in order for you to get that. You have to put you have to put movements in place. You have to put 
uh, uh, there has to be a cause and an effect, meaning you have to do something which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen, which then causes this to happen. And protesting is not doing that. I mean, but they do that already, though. Protesting is not doing that. But they already so, do that. So let me let me just. They so. already have charities. They already have foundations. They already have things set up. So what? Schools. What point is so that? My, let me just. So there needs to be a plan in general in order to make the change happen. That is correct. But if nobody sees it as an issue that plan will never come out because no one will want to hear it okay so protesting is a is a cry for those that are not being heard they have to protest first or protesting has to occur and once that attention is drawn to it then the change or the plan can be enacted but as you were saying there was not the same outcry from Blake that there was from Floyd, okay? It had been diminished, and it, it generally probably couldn't be just from how high it was. So it has been diminished. The momentum has gone down. Their recourse, the one thing they control is their bodies. The one thing that money makers want from them is their bodies. Let's take that away to draw attention to the problem. Once that attention is drawn to the problem, then the plan can be enacted. For you uh, to say that there is no plan, that nobody has a plan, I vehemently disagree with that. The problem is that there are too many plans out there in order to accomplish the single goal that we want because nobody can become unified. That is our ultimate problem as a people is that nobody can unify behind one thing. We have no one leader, one person that is going to unify us as a people or at least as a majority of a people as there was in the 60s. Right now, we can't even do anything without one group to the left sniping in with their opinion saying it's bad, one group to the left sniping in with their opinion saying it's not enough, another group in the front saying this, and another group in the back saying this. That's our ultimate problem, but we'll talk about that with the next topic later on. But I, but I also, I also, like, most of us, are, if we're not educators, we're parents. How, what, what is our plan when we discipline children? Our plan is to show them the error of their race so that they do not do the same thing. What, what is the initial, what is our initial, what is the initial action though? You hit or our initial action. reaction. What, to be I don't angry? know. You tell me. To get, I don't, I don't mean, know. So you, answer, you got it open. Won't you answer it for us, brother? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> what's the? Well, back in the day, it would be a spanking, right? Now we we can't really do that. Now it. I mean, I mean, what you do behind your doors? Hey, hey I hey. ain't saying nothing, brother. Hey. You talking over there? I'm over here on the phone, man. We can't. <laughs> but. In these modern times, they say you're supposed to to discipline somebody. You take away what they what they really want. Correct. Mm -hmm. they say the most effective way to discipline a child is to take away what they really want. Time out. A time out. All right. So that's what they that's what they they the the athletes. Gave people a timeout. I know it, Amon. Second, second. What plan did Muhammad Ali have? What plan did Kareem Abdul Jabbar have? What plan did Brown have? Muhammad Ali was Muhammad Ali didn't boycott anything. They boycotted him. But they all came. They all they they all came to this this great convention. Everybody talks about. But nobody talks about what came out of this great convention. No, Muhammad Ali was a part of a group that supported him when he did not get any money. Exactly. And that's why these guys could not stay off. The black community cannot support itself. That's our major problem. 
That's why we have, and we're going to get to this guy later, we have Jason Whitlocks and things like that because there is – if we could afford to make it a bad thing to speak out against black people, we could actually blacklist. But, but what, does it, what does it profit you to stay black? Nothing. You die broke. Our main problem is economics. None of these guys speak about actual economics because they don't understand it. They know that they have gotten a whole lot of money recently. Okay. Also, just just, just one more thing we were going in before that, and I'm talking before I got cut off by the government. <laughs> it's um, playing chess versus playing checkers. Okay. You, you see what that says, right? White supremacists and militias have infiltrated police across the U.S., report says. Right? Absolutely. You see that? And we've had a whole bunch of those. Right? Nobody talks about real strategies. Now, however many years ago, these white supremacists figured out, you know how we can gain the power that we want? We can infiltrate police departments. So we're going to send... But we're going to send... You're going to grow your hair out, you skinheads. You're going to make sure you don't have a criminal record. And we're going to get in these positions of power. Our people don't even want to vote. They think that's too much. Even, and, and they can't even see how important that is. And I, and I talk to black people who tell me that kind of craziness all the time. I'm like, well, why do you think all these people constantly running trying to get your vote? Huh? If your vote's not important. Why do you think they gave you Kamala? Because the Democratic Party wants to use you as a workhorse for votes. Everybody's out there trying to get your vote. Okay? We won't even do the simplest thing. Right. Rather also, than even better having an actual plan to accomplish the goals when you're coming. These white supremacists that infiltrated the police departments, they're poor white trash, as it were. Poor people. Exactly. Like us. But they figured out ways to get in and use political power to gain power. We don't do that. We want LeBron James to speak for us and to sit down and to kneel and all this type of stuff so we can have something symbolic instead of something real. Again, we don't even vote, and we don't even see that these people are constantly running at us trying to get our vote. Right. And that groups that are actually smaller than ours outvote us. Uh, uh, um, was it Mike Pence? Should, a person like Mike Pence should never, never win an office in this country because that person is in such the minority of opinions in this country. But you know what? The people behind him show up and vote. Exactly. You talk to mainstream Americans, they do not think like Mike Pence. But somehow this guy is the vice president of the United States. Donald Trump even. But you know what? The people that support him, they get out and they vote. We won't even do the simplest thing. So it's playing chess versus playing checkers. We're playing checkers. We're not going to play basketball for two days. What's that going to do? It brings attention. Everybody, we already have everybody's attention. We had their attention after George Floyd. But and it's been squandered. It's... But yes, you you're you're totally correct because as we stated in a few other or in our interview with Officer Thurgood, uh one of our questions was why don't why don't like why can't we get people to police our own communities, our own people, police our own communities. Well, that's part, of, like, like you say, that's part of the infiltration. That's part of the infiltration, having just regular people that live in these communities go ahead, take six weeks, and what, that's all the training it takes? Six weeks? Yeah. Get your police training. I don't buy it. Guess what? Guess what? How many security guards you see walking down the street? Yeah, a bunch of them. On the bus. How many people take security guard jobs? We're when all you can just, security. 
when you could just do pretty much the same training and be actually police and ha actually have benefits, a 401k, you could have protection. And I'm not, not just police. We, in, in the infiltration, what? like you said, we don't have enough. You get $30,000. Hold on. If you, cops get in, in Houston can get $30,000 towards a down payment on a house. Mm -hmm. Like teachers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even teaching, people don't. Teaching is a is a. When we had the uh, the 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 interview with with uh, Mr. Mackey and Mr. Holmes, not enough people. It's a community. Everything's a community thing. But if all the communities come, not when I say come together, you don't all come into one spot. But if you all, when you in the idea of coming together, if you all do the same thing, that's coming together. You now have a like mindedness, a like movement. Uh, what they call mobilization. That's mobilization. It may not be the physical mobilization that you think the definition that you think it is. Like everybody mobilized and we march. No, it's a different the economic and a almost psychological mobilization because you're teaching better. You're making better. Yeah, it may not be as grandioso as, as you would think, but it's it's a growing process in making people actually better as a people. And the, yes, that's the infiltration that we that we need because like we say, they yeah, there are people that run for office. But I don't think there's the right people that run for office because mm -hmm. the right people aren't getting put in place because the right people are probably just sitting out there doing nothing. No, I mean we, we can all we all we all come to the consensus that 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 of course what what we all wanting and desire is is of course generational. None of this stuff will be fixed in a matter of of days, weeks, months, or or even years. Like it's truly going to be generational because the systematic oppression that has been put in place has been generational. Generation. So we we I think we all understand that. It's but beyond look, generation. Look, I told you, my, to get into trouble is hard to get out. It's lifespan. It's, it's beyond generation. It lifespan. I said it's, it's easy to get in trouble, but it's hard to get out. And everybody knows that. The only problem is I don't think our people truly understand that. And for D DRC, that, when, when, when we were in the group text the other day, that's why this is one of the reasons that I don't that I disagree with the talented tent thing is because I don't really think that our even our black elite understand the issues of the rank and file in our community. They're too far removed from it. That's just the way I see it. So I don't think that it should just be the black elite that go in and make decisions. And our elite is only elite in money only and not elite in intellectual anyway. We don't pay intellectuals in our community. Follow the Garage Department on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Tweet, photo, video, Let me share some real quick. Follow me on social media. And subscribe to the Garage Department Radio on YouTube.